I have with me UF President Kent Fox. President Fox, what was a main point you tried to get across today at your address? Every week, whoever's working tells you how much of each thing you get to take home. So I see eggplant here. How much of that would I take? You can take two eggplants. Okay, got it. So if you look it over, choose which one you want, and in the bag it goes. I'm going to put it into this royal jelly that'll keep it fed. And then this is going to go into a new hive to hopefully produce a queen. It makes it a little bit easier to maneuver, but the old ones don't have that luxury. The Gainesville mayoral debate is tonight. I'll have a new candidate profile for you live from the Levin College of Law. Transportation was an issue raised by a number of people, and I know the three of you have championed this as an issue as well. The plane went down while it was on autopilot or cruise, which pilots and technicians all say is the easiest, safest part of the flight. Many parents are limited by their school zones, and not everyone's happy with the school that's picked out for them. Catch. Top story in our special broadcast this March 10th, live from the University of Miami campus where the debate's being held. I'm Maria Edinger. So one of the draws of the do-it-yourself method is that braces can be pretty expensive. Something like this can run you $4,500 or $5,500. The focus today at the summit was on two major topics, improving education in the state and helping students transition from being in school to being part of the workforce. Now, Governor Scott, what we would like to know at the Republican debate tonight in Miami, what will the candidates be doing to appeal to Floridians. Most of us who are born in America don't think twice about our citizenship, but others, 68 others in Alachua County today, have gone through great lengths <laughs> to call themselves American. All in all, from the time I first got the green card to the, till today, it was a uh, little over three years. A naturalization ceremony at the federal courthouse in downtown Gainesville marked the end of one journey. Francesca Valerina, Venezuela. And the start of another. It's a very big moment for me. I'm very happy and I feel blessed to finally be an American. These ceremonies usually host 40 people to naturalize, but today's had nearly 70 people from over 30 different nationalities, plus the friends and family who came to support them. Each new citizen today was given a pamphlet with a list of all 68 new Americans, a packet with a description of services and a copy of the U.S. Constitution, and an American flag. As I've lived here for all my life. My parents immigrated from Venezuela when I was three. And um, I, I've always felt like I was an American, really. The supervisor of elections attended the ceremony and afterward helped everyone register to vote. Something the new Americans found especially important because of the upcoming presidential election. It's a great country, full of opportunities and responsibilities. It's just, it's an amazing process. So it's hard to not get teary-eyed on a day like this. So. People left the courtroom today excited to make a difference within our country and globally. And they left proud to be an American. Marie Edinger, WUFT News. I talked to experts in aviation and in international affairs today. They said investigations into something like this can take over a year. And though it will take time to know for certain, experts are comfortable making a few educated guesses. They start off knowing that a modern jetliner going down without any sort of warning is very unusual. Experts have their work cut out for them. It's still uncertain whether Egypt Air Flight 804 crashed because of a mechanical failure or an act of terrorism. I spoke with an aviation safety consultant in Ocala today who explained the distance between the recovered pieces of plane wreckage as well as their size and condition will help with that determination. But the main thing the investigators are going to try to want to find is where the uh, cockpit voice recorder and what we call the digital flight data recorder are located. Unfortunately, Mackey says the Mediterranean is a busy, crowded body of water. The plane went down while it was on autopilot or cruise, which pilots and technicians all say is the easiest, safest part of the flight. That's what makes Mackey and other experts suspect terrorism over the likelihood that a reliable, well-kept plane would malfunction. It's also unclear how the U.S. will respond or if NATO will get involved since the plane left from France. If harm is done to one of the members, it's the same as if harm is done to all, if, if the body so declares it, and then there is a right and obligation to come to the defense of the harmed. But attacks like this can also have an effect outside of the families directly impacted. It's been a problem for the past uh, three or four years since the first revolution that we don't have the amount of tour tourism, you know, flow coming in to Egypt. It was 
It was a major part of the economy. None of the 66 people on the flight have been located as of yet. Egypt Air says their main concern now will be taking care of family and friends of those who are on board. As you might expect, many people are calling airport security into question. The plane had stopped in Tunisia, Eritrea, and a number of other countries before reaching Paris and could have been tampered with while on the tarmac in those areas. The bee population across the U.S. has suffered drastically the past few decades, especially in Florida. But the trend of backyard beekeeping, raising bees at your own home, is on the rise. You got it? Yeah. Devin and Drew Boyd live in Gainesville and started up the hobby last year. Financially for us, we said we could pay, you know, however much it costs to start up one hive and make that back and not spend money on someone else's honey. We could get it from our own yard. The couple now has three beehives right in their yard by the driveway, but their first hive turned out to be a little more difficult than they thought after they took some less than helpful advice. Looking up things on one, online is one of the biggest mistakes you'll ever make as a beekeeper. There's a lot of information out there that's not good. But that's where Mario Jacob comes in. He owns an apiary in Umatilla and teaches introductory courses to people like Devin and Drew who want to start up their own hives. I've had people now that started with me four years ago and they come back and, you know, in the store and buy supplies and we talk and they're just so happy their bees are, are thriving and doing well and it makes me happy to see them um, succeed. But in the state of Florida, not all bees are thriving. About five years ago, we lost half our operation, about put us out of business. And um, we had to bounce back from that. Department of Agriculture says that as of the start of this year, the population of honeybees in any medium to large operation are down by 8%. Mario's operation has upwards of 3,000 hives, but five is fairly typical for a backyard beekeeper. That's what makes Mario's classes on handling and keeping up with your hives so important. And this is one of the hardest parts of beekeeping. What I'm doing is trying to extract an egg from this tray. Here's one here. And then I'm going to put it into this royal jelly that'll keep it fed. And then this is going to go into a new hive to hopefully produce a queen. Mario says the backyard beekeeping trend is growing for several reasons. Some people want to pollinate their gardens and farms. Some people want to help the environment while taking on a new pastime. And some people are just in it for the honey. You take a good thinly sliced piece of really sharp cheddar cheese. Yes. And you put some honey on it. And it is it's delicious. delicious. It sounds disgusting, but it is really, really good. So that's a nice treat. Yeah. They say everyone needs a hobby. Marie Edinger, WUFT News. Hang on, hang on. The White House and U.S. Capitol were under massive police surveillance for a few hours this afternoon. A robbery suspect is dead after exchanging gunfire with Marion County deputies. County commissioners will have to work through the details of what exemptions, if any, will be allowed for the contractors in the new version. We've gotten ourselves into that Florida pattern, I think, where nights and you know the early mornings are pretty cold, but then the daytime jumps up like 30 degrees. Scientists around the world are celebrating the 100th year anniversary of Einstein's prediction of the existence of gravitational waves. No, I love that. My favorite part is that everyone else in the video just completely ignores the dinosaur. Just uh, maybe they. I skate all the time, we just didn't know. I, no one knew at all, not a problem. <laughs> all right, before we go, let's go one last check on the weather. Horrible to hear, but at the same time, that kind of makes me crave Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle's kind of worth the risk, actually. Um, you want to go? Yeah, maybe after the show. Oh, I'm always down for some Chipotle. It's Which on you, right? Uh, uh, maybe. All right, <laughs> thanks, Stephanie, thank you. <laughs> all right, lucky for all those schools on spring break right now, mm -hmm. we've got some spring-like temperatures here in Florida.